Hello everyone, I'm Tim from Tim's PC and I build custom PCs to suit anyone's needs or budget. Also live stream my builds and repairs for transparency and educational purposes. So if you would like to get an awesome new PC, you'd like to see it get put together live, send me a message today. Alrighty, so tonight we've got something a little bit different. We're going to be building one of these Thermaltake snow PCs. Don't ask me to remember the model number or anything. <laughs> but that is this little guy here so this case was described to me this customer said i want the stormtrooper case and i went oh i know exactly what case you mean you don't have to tell me any more information than that just stormtrooper case i know exactly what case you mean and here it is so we're going to be putting this one together um I will, I will not bury the lead here. So we have Galax RTX 3080 to chuck into this build tonight. So I don't know if you've seen this one. This particular card actually has RGB fans on the graphics card. So pretty cool. We'll check that out a bit later. So we're going to be putting it all together here with the MSI Mag B550M Mortar Wi-Fi motherboard. So, like I said, we've got the Mag B550M Mortar Wi-Fi motherboard. We've got ourselves a Ryzen 5600X CPU to pair with that. We've also got a Crucial P2 NVMe SSD. This is a one terabyte. We've also got a Crucial BX500 two terabyte SSD. We've got 16 gigabytes, oh no, we've got 32 gigabytes of 3600 CL17 memory. This is the Trident Z RGB memory. We've got some Thermaltake case fans and a Thermaltake cooler to go with our Thermaltake case. Alrighty, let's get started. Let's have a look at this motherboard. Let's see what we get here. So this motherboard here retails for around the $190 mark. Alrighty. So here it is. MSI B550M Mortar Wi-Fi Motherboard. So, why is it an M? Because it is a micro ATX board. So, let's go around and we'll point out some of the features. So, we've got 12, sorry, 8-pin uh, CPU power there. We've got direct touch heat sinks on our MOSFET BRM and co-processors. We have a CPU fan header. We don't have a fan header hidden up here in some silly location so I kind of like that so first fan header is up here we've got dual channel memory here we've got a sneaky little 5 volt RGB header hidden right there next to that RAM slot then we've got two more fan headers total of three so far our 24 pin ATX power for the motherboard fan header number four we have our USB Type-C front panel connection. This case does have USB Type-C on the front panel. We have our horizontal um, slots here. So we've got four SATAs and we've actually got our USB 3 in the horizontal position there, which can either be a good thing or a bad thing, depending on the case. Ooh, I think it'll be fine for this case. We've got two SATA ports there in the vertical position. We have our front panel connections. We have our speaker header here. We've got two USB 2.0s there. And what have we got here? We've got some voltage selection pins, it looks like. No jumper, there's no jumper there on the board, but they are to be put into different modes. We've got another five volt RGB header there. Fan header number five, a 12 volt RGB header, front panel audio connections here, and it's like we've got that'd be a Thunderbolt header, then we've got our clear CMOS header, and obviously our CMOS battery there. 
And so all the audio capacitors are these little gold ones here, all the audio systems are on that part of the motherboard. And around the back here, obviously the audio as close as possible to those other systems there. Um, so around the back here, so we've got surround sound audio, we've got Sony Philips digital interface, which is the optical audio out, so you can plug it straight into your sound bar or whatever. We've got obviously our line in, our microphone and our line out. So around here we, we have a, a USB type C and a USB 3.2. We've got two USB, sorry, four USB 3s there, 2.5 gigabit ethernet. We have a PS2 port there. We have a flash BIOS button and we have a display port and HDMI port there. Neither of them will actually be in use for this build. So I might even put a plug in them right now. And so all that we haven't spoken about now is just what's in the center here. So we got this little sneaky header over here. So this is the trusted platform module header. So you hear more and more about them with Windows 11. We have two M.2 slots here. We have our X16 PCIe slot, two X1 slots, and this bottom one here, X16 length, but only connected X4 the way along there. And also we've got our chipset here, which is under this thing here. So this is where the B550 lives. And that pretty much sums up all of the main components of the motherboard there. So we can turn our attention to cracking that board up. So start with the first thing that's in the pile, which is our M2 NVMe SSD. So NVMe stands for Non-Volatile Memory Express. One terabyte NVMe SSD installed. So now we we'll turn our attention to the CPU. So we actually get a cooler with this CPU, but we don't actually need. It. So we're just going to take the CPU. Oh, we got a little go faster sticker there. I don't need the instructions. I'll put this with my big pile of AMD CPUs, coolers. So this will be the last generation of AMD CPUs that have pins on the bottom of them. Oh no, sacrilege. Alrighty. So now we'll install our memory. So, Obviously people call this RAM, and so RAM is technically the, the, the little chips on the, on the sticks here. The sticks themselves are called DIMMs. So they've got the little divider halfway, that's why it's a DIMM. Not because it's on both sides, but because of that little divider. Alrighty, so I'm going to utilise So now we've got most of the things on our board prep, we can sort of turn our attention to the cooler. So for this cooler, like one thing I noticed about this case when I was just reading through the, the specs, they list it as only being able to mount a radiator on the front. However, I don't see why you can't mount one to the top. And my preference would be to mount one to the top. That's my personal preference. So you can't, we're not going to be able to do it at the top because there's physically not enough room between the top and where the top of the motherboard sits. So we could, but we could, couldn't we do it at the, like at the, at the top like that? But then you'd have to cut, you'd have to make an incision probably. Yeah, and then you're not going to have room on the top for that. Looks like they really, they really give you one pathway here to run your cables, realistically. Okay, so what nonsense do we get? Oh, we get the thermal tape nonsense cables. I love it. I bet they've got, got another controller in there for me as well. 
Mm -hmm. Alright, do you want to see something? I got something to show you. <laughs> this is a big box full of thermal tape RGB controllers that do, are not needed. I have no need for these. Like, at all. Like, you can have them for free. <laughs> Come on, take it. Take a dozen. And look what we get to do now. Add another pack. Look at this. So let's get all this out. Okay, so we need to get rid of that Intel bracket and replace with our AM4 bracket. And now we are going to have to replace the back plate. Oh goody. My favorite. Okay, so we get this plate here, but when we do it for AM4, we really have to put this special little thing down. So, we need to put this square down so that there's no con con yeah, contact. Oh, is that what that thing's for? Yeah, so they go down like that, around that square, and stops that those bits of metal making contact. And then once we do that, then we have our standard mounting kit that we've seen a million times before that we use for Intel and AMD. So for this one, we use the larger size holes. Hey Tapiri, how you going? Good to have you with us. This is a little bit fun this one because it's like it's not the it's not the usual case that people no. people order.
Put a like and subscribe, and I'll catch you all in the next video.